What's good, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of Pro and Bro Wrestling Podcast. We are your hosts. I'm Arnold Telegarda. And I'm Mr. No Days Off, Fred Rosser. And we are episode 30. 3 0. We, we are, are 30, ep- man. We are episode 30. No guests. I mean, every other week we might have a guest, but uh, again, this isn't a podcast where it's guest heavy, but if we can have a guest on Pro and Bro Wrestling, we're going to do it, but this is about us, man. Yeah, I think we're going to take a page off of the WWE book because, you know, they keep it clean. Like WrestleMania 10, they bring it back home to Madison <laughs> Square Garden. So yeah. episode 30, yeah. we're bringing it back to just the two of us, you know? Yeah, and you got the wrestling shirt on, I and got I don't the- have a wrestling shirt on. Well, you're rocking kind of like your merch a little yeah, bit, so that's, that merch. counts as a wrestling shirt. I'm going to conquer this podcast, I'm going to conquer this day, and November 23rd, I'm going to conquer Ray Jazz's punk ass. Yeah. 23 years old, you're young, buddy. You're young and dumb, too. And I'm going to run circles around you, like I said, so be prepared to get this ass whooping from me. He's been training hard, man. Oh, I see please. him. He don't intimidate me, man. No. You're... He's going to get this ass whoop. He's going to get these hands, and he's going to get this foot, foot up his ass. Mm. So he's going to get the best out of you, and you're going to get the best out of him. It's going to be a great match, man. It's but before gonna... we get all started, I just want to make sure that if you guys are watching us through YouTube, make sure you guys uh, subscribe and give us uh, a big thumbs up and write a comment. And if you're listening to us on iTunes, make sure you give us a five-star rating and write us a review so we know what we can do better. Yes. And man, oh man, um, you know, the last time we recorded a podcast, it was right before Crown Jewel. Mm-hmm. It was a while back. <laughs> and ever since that time, a lot has happened. I know. A so lot much has drama in the professional wrestling world, specifically WWE, with the whole Saudi Arabia situation. And my, 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 my coworkers, my colleagues, they just don't give a fuck, man. What are you talking about? Like, uh... Oh, okay, I know what you're talking about. Uh, Eric Rowan? Mm-hmm. He, no, not Luke Eric... Harper. No, I'm sorry. Not Eric Rowan. Luke Harper. Yeah. He just don't give a damn, you know? Yeah. So, apparently, um, I'm sure you guys know this by now. There was some um, traveling issues with the whole Saudi Arabia Crown Jewel event. Um... I guess WWE chartered a plane for all... For most of WWE superstars to get back home to the U.S. in time for SmackDown. Um, I learned some of this info through Corey Gray's After the Bell uh, podcast. And basically, he said that, you know, all the superstars got on the plane already. They sat down. It was a luxurious plane. And, you know, the stewardess uh, took their food orders for the night. And as soon as they were getting settled, all of a sudden, they were told to get off the plane because... (sighs) I don't know. I think maybe they've they, they've been told so many different things, whether it's like mechanical issues or whatever. But anyways, they were off the plane and they were just chilling there in the airport for who knows how long. Mm-hmm. Apparently, it's been a lot of hours for them to be pissed, right? Yes, yes. And, um, you know, I guess WWE flew out 20 of the superstars that was uh, promoted for SmackDown. And they made it to the States. Yeah. But the majority of them didn't. And people were pissed. They were pissed, man. A lot of the wives were pissed, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, especially uh, Carl Anderson's wife. Uh, yes. Carl Anderson uh, tweeted something like, oh, there's not enough money in the world that can make me go back. And he's like, no, on second thought, yeah, I need, a new car. I need a new house or something like that. Uh, like, I'll go back next year. And then he said he needed a new pool. <laughs> something like that, new pool. And then the wife's like, oh, like, don't you dare go back. Like, we, we were, like, worried. You know, we need our, like, dad slash husband mm-hmm. home and all that. And, um, yeah, like you mentioned earlier, Luke Harper, uh, I saw the Instagram post of him um, kind of, like, throwing jabs that WWE apparently called, called them lazy, right? For not, like, taking actions into their own hands and trying to get home on time. Yeah, I don't know what the deal is, whether it was money issues or whatever it was, but a lot of the guys weren't happy. And, mm-hmm. like, they're just saying whatever. Was, they're just saying whatever they want. Yeah. And the hashtag was hashtag not top 20. <laughs> I think that was Luke Harper's hashtag. And also... Um, Curtis Axel, he, yeah. uh, he uh, I don't know if it was through Twitter or Instagram, but it was a picture of him and his dog. And yep. he said, like, even though I'm not, like, top 20 WWE, I'm top number one at home. Yes. 
Our friend Tyson Kidd also had some words oh, too. What did he say? Uh, he, uh, you know, I forget the quote, but he did have some words. Oh. I, I forget the actual quote from him, but you know, Tyson is going to be honest and blunt, and yeah, I did see. I don't know if it was him or not, but I did see someone saying that you know WWE should be a family. You don't leave family behind, uh, and there, I think uh, some of them are pissed that Vince left early. Uh, so, uh, who left early? Vince, Brock, um... Vince, Brock. Who else was there, huh? Strowman Ford. Who again? Uh, well, he fought Tyson Fury, but I don't know what he Fury did on was, SmackDown. But Tyson was left behind, I had read. But Tyson's fine. Like, he's not... He's not promoted for SmackDown. He wasn't even on but SmackDown. But I'm surprised. He's still a top guy. Like, he's like... Sure. He, he's like a guest, you sure. know? So they want to baby him, you know? Sure. So I think he... No. I think Tyson left, but uh, who's the guy that fought Brock? Uh, oh, um, Kane Va- Velasquez. Yeah, yeah, Vasquez or Velasquez. Or something? Yeah, yeah. Kane got left behind. Mm. He got left behind. Yeah. So it's just weird how like they went about. Uh, yeah, I guess it was just you know uh, emergency people that really needed to be on SmackDown mm. got to be on SmackDown, and I don't. Did, uh, did you listen to Corey Graves? Um, podcast he uploaded it yesterday Mm -mm. and he went he he's i mean okay like i believe him like i believe that his podcast is legitimate genuine from the heart and it's not like a company's podcast but he stood up for wwe and he was like pissed at like all the wrestlers who complained Mm. because Corey was actually also the one that got left behind Mm -hmm. right so he's he's like saying like i'm just saying these these are uh, my opinions through um, the, my own personal experience. Um, the the rumor out there that Vince McMahon doesn't care about his employees and he just left Saudi Arabia without a second thought is ridiculous. Yeah. Vince is running. These are his words. Yeah. Well, not his exact words, but you know what I mean. Like Vince has a job to do. He runs WWE. He's always on the go. Mm-hmm. And this is nothing different from any other place. Like Vince will always leave by himself on his like own private plane that's Mm -hmm. like nothing new and he didn't leave thinking like oh like i don't care about the boys like he just has some business to attend to so he left and he kept it professional because he tried to meet his deadlines and um he also talked about his experience like that was his experience of him being on the plane they took his order his food order and then got um uh got escorted out and he waited in the airport Mm -hmm. and he was like saying like that's like that's just what it was, you know? Like, yeah. was it a uncomfortable situation? Absolutely. And the fact that all these wrestlers are complaining that, oh, like, not top 20, blah, 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 blah. First of all, he's saying, if you're not top 20, that's on you. That's on you, you know? And also, WWE's mentality is not like, oh, take the 20 most um, important superstars and bring them back home, forget the rest. It was like, we need to have guys that was promoted to be on SmackDown, mm-hmm. to be on SmackDown, yeah. because that's what the SmackDown um, audience came to see. Mm-hmm. So we had to do our best to uh, deliver what we promised. And yeah. that's the reason why they had that emergency, like, top 20, uh, like, flight mm-hmm. for, for those guys to fly in. And um, what else did he say? And he's like, for all these wrestlers who complain on Twitter and Instagram, he's like, that's so unprofessional. Mm-hmm. Like, we're like WWE stupers. Like, we have to be professional. We we have to deliver. It's day by day. You know how the grind is. Sometimes life happens. But don't take it out on Twitter and Instagram because that just fuels the internet trolls, the rumors, and all that. And he's like, listen, you know who didn't complain and who had every right to complain? Randy Orton. Randy Orton behind. got left behind. He got oh, left wow. behind with me. Said nothing. He knew that, you know, it was just what it was. And he kept it professional. Yes, yes. And, um, yeah, he was like, Randy Orton should have been on the top 20 flight or whatever. Yeah. But he wasn't. And he didn't complain. And if Randy Orton is not complaining, then who are, you know, who are these people to complain? Yeah, you know, uh, I don't know how I would have felt. I, I just go with the flow of things. Yeah. You know, I just want to make sure everyone's protected, everyone's safe. Yeah. Um, but people are going to Twitter because they can right now because yeah. wrestling is so damn hot. You've yeah. seen it firsthand experience backstage in Bakersfield. Some talent that we talk to mm-hmm. just don't care. Yes. You know? Yes. And they are willing to be on our podcast. Yeah. Wait, 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 don't you need permission? 
I don't give a shit. Yeah. I'll do whatever I want. They can't fire me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we'll keep it at that. But I understand um, the other wrestlers' concern because, again, it's like it's a foreign country. Mm-hmm. It's one thing for it to be whatever, Boston, Massachusetts, and not getting a flight back to California. Yeah. Saudi Arabia, man, different country, different policy, different rules. Um, they're not in charge. They're not in control. They could have been kidnapped. I yeah, don't know. Yeah. I don't know, man. And uh, but they they said it could have been a money issue too. That yeah. Saudi owed WWE money, mm-hmm. and then Vince had pulled the plug initially on the feed to Crown Jewel. But now I'm hearing rumors or whatever news that they signed. Uh, a bigger deal with them mm-hmm. yeah uh that's going uh past 2027 or something like that yeah, yeah so yeah. so now they want to have not one but two huge shows so they want to have i guess their own wrestlemania saudi uh which they already have now they want to probably have like a SummerSlam type deal you know what i mean that's interesting because i thought there was already two shows isn't super showdown in saudi arabia too Okay. Like Crown Jewel and Super Showdown. Okay, so it's two different shows. Don't I think they have like two shows a year? Yeah, right? two, two shows a year. So they want to add another one, huh? Huh. I mean, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I gotta get my facts straight, but I mean, <laughs> I know I, I feel like there are no facts right now. Everything's like still up in the air, yeah. you know. But oh man, like what? What a mess. It's crazy. But, you know, not all negative things came out of Crown Jewel. There's a lot of positives too, including. Um, a history making moment not just wrestling yes. but around the world right uh yeah. the natalia and lacey evans match that was crazy it was off the hook they made history and i was like telling my mom oh it would have been cool to see uh lacey win and then my mom was like bullshit natty's been there so long she no she needs this she yeah. needs this i'm like but i like lacey you know i've met her backstage and we've talked and she's you know a veteran she's like i don't give a shit natty deserves it <laughs> she just loves natty because every because natty uh natty my mom talked yeah, you know yeah my mom will like uh tweet or ig natty oh good luck in saudi blah 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 and uh, natty responds within <laughs> my mom's like she responds within five minutes mm. she's she's on that social media man mm. like i'll post one picture a day one picture every two or three days she's posting four or five six seven ten pictures a day yeah you know like well, she has that m that million followers yeah yeah man so she's on that social media her yeah. tireless her tireless efforts will never go unnoticed that's crazy man um but you know it was it was cool to see that the audience was so into it sure. they were they were excited that it's they they know how big of a moment it is and they were into the match and um it's just it's just so interesting to see that the world's so big and people have different customs and traditions and they have um certain ways to live their life like uh natalia and lacy they had to wear baggy t-shirts i saw that so uh, that's crazy because they they already have gear natty has gear that covers up everything i think it's more a shirt i think it's the fact that it's too tight right <laughs> but it doesn't make sense though because i remember the first time they went over there when uh sasha banks wrestled and everyone uh sasha's uh husband made all different made new gears for all the women uh uh-huh. And they were kind of like tight gears too. It just tight looked like bodysuits for body everyone. Suits, yeah. But you're right. Like <laughs> Natalia wears that anyway. So they, I guess they wanted to be extra careful. Yeah. And, um, you know, not offend anyone. They Like they wrestle with the baggy shirts. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad Natalia won because, you know, she's she's been in this for a while. Yes. She's been in there just as long as the Usos, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, who else um, that was around? Like, well, I think she got signed in like 2006. Yeah, like with Dolph Ziggler, yeah, you know. So she's an OG as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I mean, all these like wrestl- female wrestlers come and go. She was there. She was yeah. there during the whole... Um, oh, what's that? How am I blanking out today? What's... Uh, <laughs> AJ Lee. She yeah. was there with like AJ Lee's with all the Honey, you know, AJ Bellas. Lee. AJ Lee got signed the same day I got signed, May 4th, 2009. Yeah? Wow. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, Natalia's still there, just like Zack Ryder's motto, still here, always ready. Always ready, yes. So I'm so happy for her because, you know, she deserves um, uh, like a career that's super memorable because sure. she is part of the 
heart family legacy Mm -hmm. you know and now she has this under her belt which to me is more important than a championship because this breaks wrestling it's more it's bigger than wrestling and i thought it was cool that they both kind of broke down after the match and (laughs) you know had a shoot moment and held hands and hugged and all that yeah natty's emotional but she definitely let loose at uh, crown jewel yeah um, what was your favorite match? Oh, we'll get into like the main event and all that later. But um, other than the main event, what do you, what was your favorite match? Uh, Crown Jewel. I enjoyed Brock's match. I mean, it was it was physical. Yeah. It was physical, and um, but it was short. To protect Kane. Yeah, it was short, but it was a good showing. Um, I saw clips. I didn't watch it live. Yeah, same. So uh, I, I saw clips of it, and um, yeah. I thought the show top to bottom was real, really good. Yeah. And um, also Tyson Fury and Braun Str- See, I knew this was going to happen. Braun lost. Yeah. Braun and lost. that we didn't want, you know? Yeah, and that just brings him another notch down. We, he's in that big show category. Huh? Yeah. No, no one's going to take him seriously now. I've been there, man. I've been there. When you don't get the machine behind you, it's very tough. Very difficult yeah. for people to get behind you, but I still love Str- Strowman. Look, ha- look how he looks. Look at his IG. Oh, yeah. Oh, he yeah. looks incredible. And know? he started his own clothing brand. Really? Yeah, he started his own like uh, work workout T shirts. Um, something about like like meatheads or something like oh, that. Oh, or oh, he's uh, Ryback's gonna be upset. Oh please, Ryback is gonna be so Ryback. upset. <laughs> you know, there's a thing in wrestling called big guy heat. You know, like oh, big guy interesting. Heat. So like when you like size each other up, like oh, he's got bigger biceps than me. Oh, yeah, he's got yeah. a bigger chest than me. But uh, I think that's what Ryback said about uh, Brock Lesnar when they were. They said like, oh, like me and Brock don't really talk, but we just say hi. But it's kind of like, you know, like two big guys just yeah. eyeing each other. Eyeing each other up, so. But speaking of uh, Ryback and Brock, uh, we talked about this before, but there was, uh, what's the series that the WWE Network has? Table for Three, Table right? For three. And this is an old one when Ryback was still in the company. And it was Ryback, Dolph Ziggler, and Daniel Bryan. And Dolph and Daniel was teasing Ryback about the fact that Ryback was so concerned that he needed to impress Brock. (laughs) That he needed to do something to impress Brock. And then, like, Ryback got so mad, saying, like, ah, like, I wish you guys didn't say that. Now the internet's going to run with it. (laughs) And he was trying to defend and justify his action. I wasn't trying to impress Brock. This is what what happened. Uh, (laughs) That's funny. Uh, This year's WrestleMania, coming up next year's WrestleMania in Tampa, Florida, Mm -hmm. there's a lot of uh, organizations that'll be running in the Tampa, Florida area. Mm. Uh, during, during WrestleMania week and there's this one particular organization I don't know the name off the top of my head but they reached out to me well, actually they reached out to Tarver and uh, the guy also reached out to me and they want to do like a Nexus uh, reunion Fun. Nice. so I don't know if they're going to be able to get everyone together I don't know if the price is going to be right yeah. I, I, have to, I have to email the guy as we speak to let him know you know what, what I'm offering because yeah. like these promoters, they go back and forth. You know, I'm saying, well, what's your best offer? All right, well, you let... It, then the promoter knows, well, you let me know a price. Well, what are you going to have me do the two days? You want me for two days? Or are you going to have me wrestle both days? Yeah. Are you going to have me just do signings? All that, like, you know... Yeah. Um, making moves, know yourself, know your worth, you yeah. know? And I know my worth, so you got to let me know what you're going to have me do. Yeah. Uh, but there's going to be other offers uh, opening up, so... Yeah, it'd be cool to get uh, get the Nexus back together. It'd be it'd be real cool. Remember what uh, Kurt Hawkins said <laughs> <laughs> when we were backstage on he, Raw, bro. He always every time he sees me, yeah. Every time he sees me, he's like, he Slater wants to do a Nexus. <laughs> Heath is going to be the one to uh, bring us all back together. Yeah. But it's funny. I just saw a picture. Um, I saw Wade Barrett. Wade Barrett, uh, Stu, Stu Bennett was mm-hmm. in the L.A. area hanging out with uh, Gabriel. Oh, cool. Not too far from uh, where I was, but I didn't reach out to them uh, because I was busy doing my own thing. But, yeah, yeah you know, it's good to see Wade around. Mm-hmm. I can definitely see Wade uh, uh, coming, coming, to, um, coming to AEW. 
Yeah. Because uh, Cody Rhodes uh, and Wade have always been cool with one another. They just... Yeah, I mean, they were a tag team at one point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, locker room banter. Oh, they were a tag team? I feel like that's right. <laughs> oh, was it? it came out of my mouth. I'm like, I feel like this is right. <laughs> oh, but yeah, um, yes, yeah. Cody and Cody and uh, Wade are good friends. They would always yeah. have locker room banter's. Uh, so yeah, that would be cool if I saw Wade there. Well, they did work together after WWE at um, what Culture Pro Wrestling before oh. it was Defiant. Yeah, uh, but he. Uh, he didn't wrestle. He was just commentating. Oh, uh, Wade, right? Yeah, yeah. Wade, Wade would rather do that. I think he's done with wrestling, man. Cause he tran- I think he transitioned very well. Cause I know he's done some hosting things. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's actually on this Netflix series. He's a host, but it's kind of like America's Ninja Warrior. Mm. Um, CM Punk's also a host at the same time with oh, him. Oh wow! So um, Wade is representing the UK, and CM Punk's representing. US the okay. US team but it's pretty interesting to see like these two wrestlers like, yeah. you know like both in WWE now being a part of that show well they're both great on the mic great you know? on the mic I yeah. remember I remember ride, riding with Wade one time and I think I was sitting in the back seat he was sitting in the uh, the passenger seat and like we're just cruising cruising to the next city and he's like He's like talking to himself. <laughs> I'm like, man, is he like cut, cut a promo in his head? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he is like incredible. Like I've seen him uh, get handed scripts and like they, oh, oh, we need this script back. Here's another one. Yeah. Boom, boom. And then there's like pages and he's like, <laughs> and I'm like, me, I would be freaking out. You yeah. Know? Because when they give you a script, uh, the keyword that, that pisses me off is oh this is what Vince wants you to say no it's not what Vince wants you yeah. uh, wants me to say it's what you want me to say yeah you know? so like I don't know man I don't know well that's but, why he's a great actor and host because he can he has a good memory like that you yeah know? man my memory isn't that good I'm not, <laughs> it's not that good it's um, I think Jack Swagger in a recent interview he explained it the best mm. uh, the one thing that he loves about AEW is you know a week ahead of time what you're doing, what uh, if you have a promo or not, how to prepare for it, how wow. and just deliver it. You know, nice. so you know ahead of time. With with WWE, yeah, you can know ahead of time, mm-hmm. but then shit changes as sure. the show is going on, and that anxiety kicks in. You know, for me, and yeah. I know a lot of guys. So you just gotta you just gotta be able to, to deliver. But yeah. right now I'm perfectly fine now because I'm comfortable with myself and. I can talk and just do my thing and just be myself. Yeah. But yeah, that's the one thing that Swagger recently said in an interview that he loves about AEW. You know exactly what you're doing ahead of time. And uh, speaking of Swagger, uh, Jack Hager, um, did you catch his last MMA fight? Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't. Um, it was his third fight, and they had a no contest because he accidentally need his opponent in the groin. Oh, great. Oh, Goodness, really? Yeah, he had him up against the cage, and um, I guess he was trying to knee his uh, stomach, but literally it hit him right in the groin. <laughs> Wait, so is that before he attacked uh, Dustin? You remember, uh, remember was, AEW? Um, hmm. I don't. You, <sighs> probably before, yeah, because I knew, I know that AEW um, doesn't want him to wrestle before his fight. You know what I mean? That's the reason. That's one of the reasons why he's not in the ring yet because yes. he had a fight coming up and he had yes. to be physically ready. So, so he fought and then he, uh, uh, what? No contest. No contest. From a from a knee a knee to the groin mm-hmm. and then a couple of weeks later or whatever mm-hmm. he knees Goldie. There um, we go. That's probably like a play on. I'm like, yeah, oh, what play happened? on. <laughs> yeah, and it looked vicious, man. Like, uh, Swagger's attack on Oh, uh, yeah, on I saw Day, that. It just looked vicious, man. Like I said, before Swagger even stepped into the octagon, and when I heard that he was going to be doing it, I said, man, he, he, uh, his hips sit this high, you know? <laughs> Jeez. And when you get hit by Swagger, you feel it. You know, yeah. nothing like where, like, it's reckless, but you feel it. Yeah. Now, I remember talking to him, and he said he's got to work on his hands. Mm. Now, this was... Over a year ago, mm. when we wrestled. Okay. Now I'm sure he's gotten a lot better at his hands. He's got a long reach, with a long reach, good hands, and uh, a great wrestling background. Mm-hmm. He, he's going to be unstoppable, and yeah. he, and he has been. Yeah. 
Um, you know, speaking on that attack on Dustin, I always find it so amusing whenever I see Dustin outside of the makeup. Because um, it was cool to see him in like a blazer, like, yeah. you know, in his like day-to-day clothes. It yeah. makes it more real that yes. he got attacked yes. backstage. But you're right, man. It's brutal. Um, and continuing with AEW, did you see the promo that Cody Rhodes cut on Chris Jericho? Yeah, everyone's been saying it's uh, it's been his best promo ever. It is. It is and, his best promo. And I listened to it this morning and... The emotions I felt, I felt a few, I felt a few emotions, you know. Yeah. And I could hear it in his voice too, mm-hmm. when uh, uh, he said something like, "This fight isn't about the dead; it's about the living." Mm-hmm. And he mentioned his wife and his mother. And when he mentioned his mother, his voice got real, like you know, it cracked. It cracked, and I almost shed, shed a tear mm-hmm. because it felt real, and I just love that about what AEW is doing and mm-hmm. delivering. It's just so real. Like my match, you know, not to uh, you know talk about my match with Ray Jazz, but it is real to me. Mm-hmm. It is real. Like I think about it every minute, every second of the day because yeah. I want it to, because the story is there, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and I want to be able to deliver. Yeah. So Cody, um, Cody with that promo on uh, Jericho was amazing. And what I love about his promo is the fact that he talks on the mic like a normal human being. Mm-hmm. He was talking about Chris Jericho saying like, oh, you know, um, Cody Rhodes was born with a silver spoon. And uh, Cody was like saying like, oh, it must have been so tough growing up with a father who's a famous um, hockey player. Mm-hmm. We were born from the same uh, silver spoon, you dick. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Like, that's yeah. really cool for him to say that because yeah. that's how people talk in real yeah. life. And for him yes. to say that on the mic is like yes. makes it so real. Yes. I mean, I'm bored into it. Yeah. I'm bored into it. Yeah. So I can't wait to see. But, you know, a lot of uh, the internet is saying that if Cody... Uh, Co- Cody's saying that if he doesn't uh, win, yep. then he'll never challenge for the AEW championship. You mm-hmm. know, that's a lot of fans are saying that's kind of like a spoiler. A spoiler. Yeah, because I don't know how that's going to go down because AEW is known for someone who doesn't clickbait. You know, they take pride in that. If they offer, uh, if they promote a match, they're going to make sure that match has a, a clean result. And if they're going to have um, a schmoz afterwards, it'll be after the match takes place, after it's done. Mm-hmm. Then it'll be... But they want a clear winner. So for Cody to say that, I then I think... Yeah, you're right. I think he might win the AEW championship because I can't see Cody not ever, you know, yeah. going after that again. And it's funny. Uh, a couple of matches, it went the time limit. You know, yeah, I, I love that was how they cool. do that because it reminds me of old WCW stuff. Oh, time limit, mm-hmm. like fifteen minute time limit, and then it goes the distance. Yes, keeps everyone strong. I think it happened between Pac and mm-hmm. um, Moxley. Yeah, Moxley. Yeah, keeps both guys strong, mm-hmm. and like sometimes it it's can a real go, fight. Yeah, it can go the distance. I love how they implemented that yeah. into the uh, curriculum. And I'm right. <laughs> AEW <laughs> curriculum. Yes, yes, the <laughs> AEW Academy. Uh, but I told you, even like as a kid, to me, that's one of the things when I thought wrestling was real. I was like, man, like it just, they got so lucky that all the match finished at the time slot that they did because if not, the show would have been longer than two hours and then we couldn't yeah. see the results, yeah. you know? So for them to do this, it makes it more like a legit sport because sometimes sure. that does happen in sure. a fight. And, um, yeah, I'm so looking forward to this whole, um, you know, uh, Cody Rhodes or Cody and Chris Jericho. And did you see, uh, you probably didn't see it because he just posted it, but Chris Jericho posted this funny, um, oh, video. With, what with Virgil? Yeah. What, yeah. I know. What the hell? Like of all people, Virgil, like, yeah. what was the point of it? But I just know, I just, I, I know Jericho and I know what he's like on camera. He's like a pit bull off the leash. Yeah. But behind but behind closed curtains like he's like making sure everything is mapped out mm-hmm. perfectly mm-hmm. and like i i remember years ago i think i've talked about it on uh on pro wrestling when i was doing nxt mm-hmm. and i got eliminated and then i had to cut a promo and it was babyface mm-hmm. and like boo they're booing me i didn't know how to uh turn on them jericho is in my ear he's like turn on them 
turn on them. Don't let them control you. Turn on them. And yeah. I didn't know how to flip the switch, and I was, like, nervous. Mm -hmm. But Jericho, man. So what he posted was almost like a comedy sketch because it was people talking about how great Chris Jericho is. Yes. And he's like, you know, there's B-rolls of him in the bathtub, yeah. just, like, <laughs> chilling. And yeah. they even they interviewed, uh, I think, Chris Jericho's old, like, church like that, that the lady, yeah. yeah, and then she's like, When Chris was just a little boy, I always knew he would grow up to be an AW world champion. Yes, like, they'll say yes. stuff like that, which was hilarious, yes, yes. And uh, man, what else did they say? It was super sarcastic and yeah. super funny, yeah. And it goes to Jack Hager, and he's literally just doesn't say anything, yeah. he just cuts to the next person, yeah. It's funny, man. Um, and then uh, he kissed the one kid, what's his name? Sammy? Yeah, Sammy. Yeah. Like, uh, just like kissed him on the cheek. Yeah. Like, stuff <laughs> Godfather. Like that. Yeah. Like, just like <laughs> funny, funny stuff. Yeah. Man. man it's so great. Mm -hmm. um, but, okay, going back to the whole WWE thing, we mentioned about Crown Jewel earlier. And due to all these superstars not making it to SmackDown on time, they were panicking and you know uh adam cole was on whose podcast i want to say sam roberts or Corey graves Corey graves um he was just talking about his schedule and how that all went down mm -hmm. it was like a, a two, was that like thursday like friday yeah friday and it was two around 2 p.m and adam cole was home like home at 2 p.m the same day as smackdown and he gets a text or whatever saying like, oh, we might need you for SmackDown. And then he got a follow-up text saying like, yes, we do need you for SmackDown. Ugh. The plane leaves in an hour. So he had to get ready, get all the stuff ready. And um, I, I would be anxious as a mug. Yeah. Man. Imagine anxious. thinking you're going to get a day off. And never, boom. never, man. When I get home off the road. I immediately do my laundry. I repack my bags. I'm not done yet, you know? Mm -hmm. I repack my bags. I put them in the corner because you just never know, man. And again, you, we got to stay ready. Yeah, you got to stay, stay ready. ready. So I'm very, you know, I don't like... Some people just throw their... They, they don't clean out their gear bag, you know what I mean? It's just disgusting. So I'm very anal, very anal. I want my shit to be repacked, put in the corner. So yeah. when I got to fly, I can just grab and go. There's this joke that... Um, <laughs> Not wrestling related, but uh, the group Destiny's Child, um, mm. big uh, big boy from Big Boy's Neighborhood said, "Oh, I think Michelle Williams always has her back bags packed in case Beyonce decides to go on tour. Oh. <laughs> She's always like ready, like for a Destiny's Child reunion." Oh, that's messed up. <laughs> that's messed up. All those girls are talented. Um, Fuck. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so Adam, I think he said that his plane landed around like five or something like that or whatever. He got to the building and the show was already happening. By the time he got there, um, it was already the segment where Brock and Paul Heyman was passing through mm -hmm. them. And also Shawn Michaels was on, yes. uh, WWE on their Fox show. Mm -hmm. And he talked about what happened with him, yeah. you know, saying that it was last minute with the whole crown jewel thing and they felt like oh we were gonna need a lot of the nxt guys on smackdown and they flew in that day and he said he just got there just in time for him to drop his bags and do that segment with triple h with brock and paul passing by because on smackdown brock and paul was passing by and the triple h and sean just went like that giving them a look but sean said he literally just got there put his bag down the triple h like oh we gotta do this thing real quick you know, control that's the chaos. first thing he did in the building. C control chaos. I love him. Yeah. Uh, that's how it is. Yeah. Um, but man, SmackDown had a really good rating because of that. Huge rating with the NXT invasion. Yeah, because every segment was important, you know? <laughs> it's funny because now I'm seeing uh, GIFs or whatever the fuck they're called. Yeah, GIFs, GIFs or memes. GIFs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing like uh, uh, one fan post it, uh, Nex is in the clouds. Mm -hmm. uh, saying, oh, uh, Nexus is dead, and they're watching uh, <laughs> and they're looking over at the NXT guys. You oh, know? that's hilarious. And then they're comparing the seven of us with the uh, NXT guys in the ring. Wow, like, oh, I have to see God. that. That's funny. It's just like, so so much funny stuff. Yeah, so much funny stuff. I, I I do I do love the invasion. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, SmackDown was super crazy because um, just seeing Adam Cole and Daniel Bryan in the same ring was amazing. They had an amazing match, and it was really cool to see Adam Cole take on the role of being 
kind of like Triple H and Shawn Michaels pet project. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? They're like they're not in a mean way, but mm-hmm. you know they're so heavily in, invested in the NXT brand and Adam Cole being carrying the brand as the NXT champion. And during the match with Daniel Bryan, uh, Triple H and Shawn Michaels was on ringside, mm-hmm. and they were so like rooting for uh, Adam, and it was a great match. Everyone enjoyed it. Everyone mm-hmm. loved that match. Mm-hmm. And I just love that it was a clean win. Clean win. Clean win with Adam Cole's finishing move. Mm-hmm. And as they pin uh, Daniel Bryan, you see Triple H, Shawn Michaels, like going like like that. Like, mm-hmm. Yes, you know. So, and they also it's cool that this time Survivor Series is three brands, right? Raw, SmackDown versus NXT. And it's it's just it's just like it's just so. Refreshing because every segment was a must see. We don't know what's gonna happen. Every segment mattered. I mean, honestly, you don't know what the hell is gonna happen on SmackDown or NXT on Wednesday. Yeah, so you, you just don't know. I yeah. mean, NXT on Wednesday, AJ Styles. Like, come on, mm-hmm. you've mm-hmm. got the best of the best. Now, if you're a fan and you're not happy with that, then I'm sorry. We can't please you. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you need to go watch, you know, American Ninja Warrior or American Gladiator <laughs> or Dancing with the Stars because they've got the best of the best. You yeah, you got, you know, you got AJ doing this. You've got Finn doing what, you know, like the yeah, Bullet I mean, Club. yeah, the Bullet Club, like all that stuff. You don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah, and it was cool. It was smart for WWE to have the OC invade NXT because. It would only work if the OC invaded NXT mm-hmm. because the OC are what you would like to call the OG independent darlings, right? Mm-hmm. AJ Styles, the face of independent wrestling, you know, um, the Good Brothers, legends in Japan. Yeah. So they were cool enough to invade NXT. Mm-hmm. If it's like Mojo Raleigh mm-hmm. <laughs> invading like NXT, hey, no I, one's gonna I, be I, like. Yeah, I try to see the best in everyone, man. Yeah, but you know so, what I mean, yeah. like. As a general viewer, like you're watching NXT and I don't know, you see like No Way Jose popping in yeah. and like, he's not a threat. Like yeah. what's going on here? NXT has that like cool, like hip, cool kids vibe. Sure. So had, like another group of cool kids had to invade and NXT. I, and I mentioned it before, like once once NXT goes live on Wednesdays, they're going to start bringing manpower from uh, Raw and SmackDown to NXT. Yeah. And that's exactly what they're doing because they want to beat them in the ratings. I don't know how the ratings were uh, this past week. I'm sure it's great with what happened. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was really cool to see um, the OC, but like just mixing in it, mixing it in with the with the NXT roster, you know, mm-hmm. with Tommaso and everyone. And the fact that AJ Styles had his first NXT match. He never was on NXT. Wow. He went straight to the main roster. Yeah, he was a surprise yeah. in the Royal Rumble yeah. entrance, you know? Yeah. So to see him wrestle with those guys, I'm sure it was a dream come true for them, too, having to work with AJ Styles, you yeah. know? Now, I don't know if you're hearing rumors like I am about maybe Seth jumping over to NXT. Well, they teased it on Raw. So okay. on Raw, um, Seth came in and, you know, to have that full effect of him being down in the dumps, he wasn't wearing his merch. He was wearing his normal street clothes Mm -hmm. and he came in there and he was saying oh you know what um i know a lot of you guys are happy that the fiend won and i'm not the universal champion anymore i'm not an idiot i know you guys like that i don't care too much about that i care that the fiend took the universal championship to smackdown Mm -hmm. and i care that brock lesnar is now back on raw with that top title Mm -hmm. and you know um i wanted brock gone because I'll, i'll work hard to change raw to be um a land of opportunity with guys or like braun Strowman or baron corbin to step up but for brock to come back again it's gonna be the same old thing and you know i always say rebuild what's this thing rebuild whatever redesign and all oh, that yeah it's like i always say that but for the first time i feel like i don't have the energy to do that <laughs> and i don't know what's next and then triple h came out and uh triple h said you know what's funny seth Every time that you don't know what's next, I always show up. You didn't know what's next before, and you became the NXT, the first ever NXT champion, and you held the brand on your back. You didn't know what's next before, the shield form. Mm-hmm. You didn't know what's next before, you became WWE world champion. And now you don't know what's next, I know what's next. 
you know, um, basically telling Seth that he wants to recruit him to be in NXT. Mm -hmm. And also threatened him at the same time, like good old-fashioned Triple H, saying, you know, you know how it is if you're not with us. You're against oh, us. Oh, God, yeah. And then Undisputed scary Era. Word, scary words. Yeah. And then Undisputed Era came from the Ross, uh, from the barricade and looked like they were going to step up. And then when the OC came, and it just became a whole thing. Yeah. But I guess that's that's the tease of like Seth going to NXT. But I don't think it's going to happen. They don't. They don't need Seth. They. Yeah, no. They. The. The roster is jam packed with amazing, you know, like Pete Dunne, Matt Riddle, yeah, Tommaso, you know, like Keith Lee. Keith they, Lee, holy moly, man! Like, for his size, right? For his size, man. If you can do it, do it. I mean, he's doing like Chinese get ups, like Shawn Michaels kick ups, Bro, he's and like, assaults. I mean, I know Titus can't do that. <laughs> I know Titus can't do that. <laughs> Oh man, yeah. but like that guy can move. I'm a huge fan of him. Huge I mean, what fan. What did someone say? Uh, this, I think someone said um, Keith Lee is like the garlic bread on Olive Garden, limitless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is. That's spot on, man. I can't do some of that stuff. Yeah. I cannot do some of that stuff, man. But so so talented. Yeah, so talented. And it was cool that you know with this whole. Uh, Survivor Series crossover with NXT, you get Adam Cole main eventing SmackDown, main, main eventing Raw for the first time. You have Keith Lee being on Raw for the mm -hmm. first time, mm -hmm. and it's just really cool. And I'm yeah, it's, it's great, man. Yeah, so uh, there's a lot of man, there's a lot of leaders. Mm -hmm. I don't know who like the actual leader is. Like, who's the actual top guy of NXT? Who's the actual top guy? Well, of Raw. There's so many of them, man. Yeah, well, if you're going to go old school, it would be the guys with the world championships, world right? Championships. But then you're right. I'm not going to... I'm not going to... Brock is not... No. Yeah. He, no, he's not... He's leader. not one of the boys, huh? Not, yeah, he's not one of the boys. He has his own locker room. Mm -hmm. I hope Ray beats the shit out of him. Yeah. Uh, just like he did on Raw with the uh, baseball bat. Yeah. That's how you... That's exactly how you got to beat... The beast, you know, yeah. you gotta, he's gotta hit the post with his head straight on, bust him wide open. You gotta take a uh, baseball bat to the ankle, you know, mm -hmm. right to the ankle. Don't take it to the ribs, right to his fucking ankle. Mm -hmm. You have to really, really chop him down. And I love how they're doing it. And Brock and Ray at Survivor Series, it's gonna be off the hook, man. It's gonna be Wait, amazing. Where's Survivor Series at? I don't know. I'm not sure what city. Can't be LA because it was LA last year. Yeah, I thought they were keeping it in LA. Are they? Huh. Uh, maybe not. Maybe not. I haven't seen anything uh, it being advertised. And they were just at uh, the Staples Center. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah, it would have been cool to uh, watch it again. Yeah. If you wanted to come. You always. Know, you're, always. You're just always so busy. <laughs> you're just always so busy surprising me on my birthday, which I appreciate. <laughs> Of course, man. You got me a jacket that I have to get clean now because I picked up my God babies. Oh. And they, they were painting in school and they grabbed me by the wrist. Amazing. And I'm like, Daniel, you see this? Like, I mean, it's not it's not really no noticeable, but he was grabbing me yeah, so he could sure. show me. He didn't mean to do it. Sure, he, he was, was grabbing excited. to sh uh, like show me his paint work. Yeah. I'm like, Daniel, what the... F I don't curse. With yeah. I, I don't curse with my God babies. Yeah, but of yeah, course. man. I appreciate you hooking me up, man. Of course, man. Me up. And you know, that's the first time that I met your boo. <laughs> <laughs> well, in person. In person. You know, like uh, I've talked to him here and there through social media, but it was he's a really, really good dude, man. You got a, you got a good one in your hands. Yeah, he's not out, so uh, That's why I didn't say his name. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I said boo. <laughs> He, I, he, uh, he watches our episodes. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. It, I, um, I was telling Hart, you know, and saying that, like, man, um, like, Fred's got a good one, man, because he put a lot of thought and consideration into his birthday and made sure that you felt special on your, on your big day. You I know? had fun, man. I had fun. Like, at first, like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm 36 now. People yeah. ask me, oh, what do you want to do? I don't want to do anything. Yeah. I told him a couple months ago that I'd love to go paintball shoot, uh, paintball shooting because mm -hmm. I had fun doing that a while ago. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, the, the virtual reality stuff that with nuts. the uh, headgear, it was a lot of fun, man. Yeah. And you surprised me. And, <laughs> you know, your birthday's coming up December 24th, yeah, ladies and gentlemen. Man. Oh, my God. So, you know, um, if you want to... If you want to 
uh, donate to Arnold. Just <laughs> in, info at realfredrosser.com. And all, Patreon link is down below. Yeah, yeah, the link is down below. And then any gifts, just send them uh, over to me. Man. And I'll make sure Arnold gets them. I think I'll be around. Uh, you know, uh, I got to reach out to Hart to see maybe what she has planned. You know, I got to reach out to yeah, her. Yeah, hopefully it's Roscoe's chicken and waffles. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> it's your night. It's your night. So hopefully um, I'm invited to maybe if anything that's going yeah. on. Yeah. Know. Who knows? But, but you don't uh, worry about it. <laughs> um. But you know, uh, it was such it was such a great day, man. I like like meeting like your circle of friends yeah. too. It was really yeah. cool. You got good people in your corner, man. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> they're all just like they're all fun to hang out with. You know, it was it was a fun day. Oh, that um, was so funny yeah, it was. Uh, but you know, earlier you mentioned about like uh, uh, Brock, and you know, like Ray has to like hit him on the ankles, and that's what I really appreciated about the Finn Balor and Brock Lesnar match because it was smart because. They made it a key point to the audience that the reason why Finn had the upper hand is because Brock hit his um, what's his part like his sternum, his sternum like, yeah. with the the corner of the table, mm-hmm. and that's what Finn worked on yeah. for the whole match, yeah. and Story that's what made it believable. Yes. Believable, you know. Yes, like if I'm wrestling so I'm two hundred. In 24 pounds right now, mm-hmm. on the dot, 224, yeah. and I'm wrestling someone that's 300 pounds. Mm-hmm. They gotta slip on a banana peel, and they gotta, they gotta take themselves out yeah. somehow, some way, mm-hmm. for me to get the upper hand. Yeah, it's just the way it is. It's and just the way it is. That's a classic uh, Shawn Michaels strategy, man. He was wrestling guys like Vader, Psycho Sid, mm-hmm. and he made it sure that in his match he gets beat up throughout the whole match. And at the end, he gets lucky. Sure, yeah. Because uh, if there's no sympathy, if mm-hmm. there's no sympathy behind you, if the people aren't on the edge of their seat mm-hmm. rocking and rolling and rooting for you, yeah, then they're not going to be into the finish, you know? Right. They're not going to be into uh, the one, two, three. And yeah. that's always the goal of mine. Even going into this match with Ray Jazz or yeah. any match, you know, if the people are silent when you come out, that's fine. But after that one, two, three, you want them on the edge of your seat and you want them to say, man, that was a good match. That was a great performance by Darren Young, Fred Rosser. And I think it's even more rewarding when they're silent during the entrance, but pop at the end. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Like a match with Dolph Ziggler and um, and, uh, where the hell was it at? uh, India. Mm. Whoa, uh, India? Yeah, India. Whoa. And it wasn't televised. Jeez. We, we, we went 20 minutes, me and Dolph. I was the baby face, he was the heel. Mm. And the place was rocking and rolling. They got yeah. behind me. Yeah, man. They got behind me. So it's just like moments like that that I definitely cherish. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, let's talk about the biggest news that happened that everyone is happy about. The Fiend finally becoming... The WWE Universal Champion. It happened. It happened, man. It happened, and we were rooting for him. And, you know, some people, of course, you're not going to please everyone. Like, even though a lot of people are happy, there's some people that say, like, yeah, like, I'm glad he won. But, man, like, he should have won at Hell in a Cell and then wrestled Seth again and then retain at Crown Jewel, which I agree with. Like, mm-hmm. I agree that that's what should have happened. Yeah. Um, but... I think it's really cool if you think about it that The Fiend won the Universal Championship on Halloween. Yes, right? Yes, yes, that's perfect. So it was on Halloween night. Hopefully, hopefully someone uh, someone within the writing team or maybe he suggested it. Someone had to suggest it. You know, yeah. That this would be perfect for me to win on Halloween. Mm-hmm. And I think it was a great move. Yeah. Great and, move. Um, it was a great match, uh, you know, a lot, 50-50, some people didn't appreciate the red lighting throughout. Mm. Uh, I don't know if they're going to do that every time The Fiend wrestles, where mm. it's just like red. It worked for Hell in a Cell, I get it, because you're in hell and all <laughs> that, but then I don't know if people like every match to be like that for yeah. The Fiend. And um, yeah, now... It, I mean, it hurts my eyes, I guess, watching it on TV. Yeah, sure. It's you know, weird. It's good to have that little red when Kane comes out. Yeah, uh, entrance. You know? After two minutes, it's like, man, yeah. turn it back. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, now it's really interesting to see where they go from here, right? Mm-hmm. Because uh, it's weird that Bray Wyatt is on SmackDown, but the Universal Championship, is a, it's a Raw title. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's weird that now that Brock's officially on Raw, so does that mean the Universal Championship is a SmackDown title? 
And again, I told you this already with my OCD. <laughs> if they're gonna do that, change it to blue, or change it not to like don't keep it red. And I got excited because I thought that that's what they were gonna do because they promoted that Bray Wyatt was gonna be on Fox and he's gonna reveal the new WWE Universal Championship. Mm. And I was like, oh, here we go. Like it's gonna look completely different. Mm -hmm. And then he was on Fox and uh, he he raised the championship. And it's it's just new new plates. New plates, yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. But they hyped it up like it's gonna be a new title because on Twitter Bray Wyatt was holding a champ the Universal Championship and it looked a little different. Mm -hmm. It had some like weird like imprints on it and mm -hmm. I thought like he was gonna do something more crazy with it. But um, maybe he will down the line. Who knows? Well, hopefully they do because it just means more merchandise. Yeah. Different kind of merchandise. Yeah. So. But man, I'm telling you, that championship's on SmackDown. They need to change it because yes. it's so off brand, you know? Yes. yes. But now I wonder who he's going to face. Like, I wonder what's next for him. It's going to mm -hmm. be so interesting. And I wonder if we're ever going to see Firefly Funhouse Bray Wyatt defend it. <laughs> Which, I mean, to be honest, I don't think he should. I feel like, I feel like that guy, he's like such a positive guy, yes. you know, especially when um, Seth attacked them at the Funhouse. He didn't even fight back. Like he's just like scared. <laughs> like Seth, why would you do this? You know, like because he's not yes. a violent man. Like yes. the fiend is his violent outlet. Yes. yes. So I don't. I I don't want him to def like to wrestle. I want like the fiend to be his ugly side. Mm -hmm. But it's gonna be so interesting to where they go from here because we didn't. Because here's another thing. Uh, Bray Wyatt was supposed to be on Miss TV on Friday, mm -hmm. the night that he missed SmackDown. Because of that, that didn't happen. And now, like, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen for Bray on SmackDown. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm definitely curious to see what's going to happen. But I'm glad to see that he's the champion. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Micah, Re Micah Rotunda was, like, posted a picture of her brother with the Universal oh, yeah? Champion like, oh, okay. on uh, Instagram. Oh, just from, like, being at home and stuff? Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. I mean, like, a, a, a shot of him in the ring. But oh, you know what I, I mean? Like, supported. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> Bray has his, uh, he has his Instagram and he's like... He has an Instagram? Yeah. What the heck? Yeah. Oh, I never knew that. Yeah, he has an Instagram. Uh, it's under his real name. Mm. Uh, That's why I didn't find it. it. I think it's The Wyndham Rotunda. Oh, sick. So it was under his real name. So yeah, he's like, he's smiling and yeah. having a good time. So uh, it, it's not like he's The Undertaker. No. But even The Undertaker has Instagram now. But before... Yeah. Like, it was very, like, you never saw the end of the No, he, he was even, like, he wasn't even on, like, Hall of Fame. Like, Hall yeah. of Fame inductions. Yeah, he wasn't there. They kept it real. And, and yes, yeah, so has he been inducted into the Hall of Fame? No. Not yet, huh? Mm -hmm. Hmm. I wonder who would induct him. Who do you think? Undertaker. Hmm. I would say Vince. Okay, I would say Kane. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 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 Or, no, maybe Bruce Pritchard. Oh, because for sure. He yeah. He originally, it could be a, a, a series of people. Yeah. It could be him. It could be Million Dollar Man because Million Dollar Man managed him a little bit. Mm. Uh, but uh, Brother Love, Brother Love was the guy that originally brought him in. Yeah, man. So, yeah, it could be anybody. It could be anybody. It's um, uh, not to switch over, but it seems like Randy keeps uh, calling people out. Like he called out The Rock. He did? About wrestling him at WrestleMania. Oh. And now recently, he called out John Cena. Yep, I saw that. Uh, WrestleMania. So why does he keep calling people out? And he just signed a new deal with WWE. Yeah. So for all the internet trolls who thought that he could have been jumping to AEW, I mean, it's not going to happen. Yeah. Because Hunter, I know. Hunter has like... He's here with Randy. Sure, you know? sure. He's here. He's like, no, you stay here, man. I'll mm -hmm. take care of you, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, why are you going to go over there, you know? How long do you think it's going to last over there, you know? Yeah. They're going week to week, you know? We're going to be around forever. That's true. Wow, know? good point. So, I know how Hunter talks. Yeah. Always looking at him right in the eye and just saying, you know, come on. Evolution, why are you going to go over there, you know? Yeah. I'll take care of you here. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You have great impressions, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think the reason why Randy's doing that is to create a storyline for himself, right? Because, mm -hmm. um, like you said, he's got... Um, you know, sign a new deal. Maybe they have nothing planned for him yet, you mm -hmm. know? So maybe he's trying to, like, see what's out there, what he can, like, grab onto. And, you know, I saw... I haven't watched a video, but I saw a video from What Culture, I think. And the headline is, 
Nobody wants to wrestle Randy at WrestleMania 36. Nobody wants to wrestle him? That's what the headline. I haven't watched the video what yet, kind of so I don't shit know. Is that? I don't know what, what it's about. Nobody wants to wrestle Randy. Are you kidding me? I don't know. Like there's there's fans um uh on or whoever on social media saying that uh right now is it is it him and Ricochet or are they doing some stuff? He doesn't have a clear story. He gets involved in Rusev's storyline, Bobby Lashley. He's been RKOing Rusev, Ricochet. Yeah. It's still like very Team Hogan, Team Flair right now. Yeah, a lot of fans say that, you know, if if Ricochet can't have a good match with Randy, you know, then um, you know Yeah. Whatever. But sure. like come on, Randy can have a good match with anybody. Mm-hmm. You know? True. He is flawless. Yeah. He is flawless in the ring. And like I comment, you know, I comment on stuff like that on social media and just say, you know, you know, I'm rooting for uh, Ricochet, and he's going to do well. I mean, Randy doesn't want to have a bad match with anyone. He doesn't want to no. have a bad match no, with no. Ricochet. Randy's not going to make him look like shit. Yeah. You know, Randy's going to highlight him, you know? <laughs> you know what's crazy, though? It's really interesting because we all know that Randy has all the talents in the world um, on the mic, in the ring. He has the look. He's gifted with everything. But it's very interesting to see that there's other uh, other wrestlers kind of... Um, Oh, what is it? How do you guys say this? Um, they make it believable that Randy's also known to be lazy. Mm-hmm. Because oh, like Jericho, right? Jericho said that. I didn't hear what Jericho said, but Ric Flair said it because Ric Flair again was on Corey Gray's podcast. I don't know where he had, he said it actually, but um, they, he asked them about Randy Orton, and Flair said, "When he wants to be, he can be one of the greatest wrestlers in the world." When he wants to be. He, he always, no matter what. Yeah. I've never seen Randy in a bad match. Never. Never. A huge fan of him. I still watch his stuff. Yeah. For the way he moves, the way he delivers stuff. There's no wasted movement with him. He's one of my favorites to watch. Yeah. Currently. And Triple H compared him to Shawn Michaels, which is the best comparison yeah. ever. Yeah. Just never. flawless. Doesn't have to think about it. No. Or I'm um, sure he thinks about it. it, makes it he just makes it look easy. Yes, trust me. Randy's very like you've seen it firsthand. Yeah, he wants stuff like, oh, is this how is this how it's supposed to yeah, be? Yeah, like, and absolutely. I'm the same way. Like if I'm working someone, I gotta walk through some stuff. Yeah, you know, uh, to make sure that we're on the right page, you know, mm-hmm. and there's no hiccups. Mm-hmm. So, hmm. um, going back to NXT a little bit, I'm so excited that they're doing stuff with uh, Finn Balor and AJ Styles. Yeah, like you mentioned earlier, AJ did this and Finn did the Bullet yes. Club. So they're teasing like a Bullet Club um, uh, reunion. Mm -hmm. But you know what's funny? We watched SummerSlam together, and I don't remember this segment at all. But I guess maybe they played it on WWE exclusive or whatever. But um, there's a footage of Finn Balor getting ready for the Bray Wyatt match in the locker room. Mm -hmm. And the OC came. All three of them Mm -hmm. came to Finn. And he said like, oh, you know, Finn, um, we've seen like the Fiend, like, you know, taking people's head off. Like, you might... uh, I hope you're prepared. Yeah. And then, you know, Finn doing this, the usual, like, oh, like, I got this. Like, Finn better watch out for me. And then, uh, <laughs> and then the good brothers and AJ Styles, like, whenever you need the help, we're right here. And then, like, all three of them, are like, Rrr. and then as they're walking away, <laughs> um, I think it was uh, Luke Gallows that was saying, like, oh, look at Finn. He wants it. Mm. And he's like, or he's like, he wants it. He wants it. Mm. And, like, as they're, uh, you know, fade away to the camera. And Finn was like super serious, and um, yeah, I never saw we didn't, we didn't see that at SummerSlam. No, no, I don't remember. Unless we were too busy eating or something. Oh yes, yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, eating and then uh, listening to your friends and stuff. Yeah, like that. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I just don't remember seeing that. It's like whoa, but I'm really glad that they're doing that. And yeah, man, it's gonna be so interesting. Like WWE is such a different world right now. Yes, yes. We're done with the days of. Uh, you know, uh, John Cena versus Batista versus Triple H. Yeah, yeah, they don't like J- Cena is like on that Undertaker schedule. Yeah, once a year or so. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but he's all Hollywood now. So yeah, yeah. At first, when he left, it, it was probably tough because mm. he was the poster boy. Yeah. For the company, um, so the company's doing great, man. It's doing amazing because they actually have. Well, they they always do, but I mean, more than ever now, this actually. People that deserve to be at their spot. Mm -hmm. Imagine 2005, if you were to go back in time and you tell 
Vince McMahon or maybe Jim's, Jim Cornette. He's like, hey, the top guys in 2019 are going to be Brian Danielson, uh, Adam Cole, Kevin Owens, um, you know, Tyler Black, mm-hmm. you know, and they're going to be world champions and they're going to represent WWE. And that's at that time, that would have been as ludicrous as going back to 1999 and going to WCW and telling Eric Bischoff that Rey Mysterio Jr. and Eddie Guerrero is going to be future WWE world champions. Mm-hmm. The business has changed so much and it's changed for the better. You know? It has. It has. Uh, great time uh, for wrestling fans and superstars. Yeah. I think November 11th, uh, New Jer- uh, November 11th, uh, fuck. Uh, uh, November 11th New Japan Pro Wrestling is going to be in town really? Yeah. Long Beach? because that's where they always go no they're going to be in the LA area and I'm actually going to go to it too Lance Hoyt you know Lance Hoyt no Uh, he's New Japan Pro Wrestling and I'm going to go there in a suit and tie What's the eleventh? What day is the eleventh? It's like a Tuesday, man. Oh it's wow! Like a, it's like a Monday. That's sick. It's like a Monday or a Tuesday what? at the at the Globe Theater or Damn. something like that. So I'm gonna go there uh, because again, you go in there looking like a free agent. <laughs> it's like that needs to be signed, man. It's like a, that's just like waiting for an offer. Yeah, because a few people, Lance Hoyt, uh, Lance Hoyt, and. Um, uh, Carl Anderson, yeah, uh, who's good friends with uh, with one of the promoters, said that I should go, so I'm I'm gonna go. I'm I think I think they'll definitely take you, man. Because nah, we'll see, man. I'm my own worst critic, so we'll see. I mean, but I want to be able to experience it. Just one tour, man. That's all oh, I want. Yeah, one tour, take care of me, and you yeah. Know, I, I mean, not only are I you fucking live out there, if you know what I mean. Sure, <laughs> <laughs> I do know what you mean. Yeah. Um, but you know, like aside from you just being like, um, like great in the ring, you know, like for them, I feel like they, they need talent right now because Mm. most of their guys are in AEW, they're Mm. top guys, you know? So I can't see them like turning people away. Yeah. And it's funny because the show that I'm on tomorrow, uh, Cactus League Wrestling defending my international championship title in San Antonio, um, AEW Superstars Pentagon. Oh, cool. And the Lucha Brothers. Yeah, the Lucha Brothers were supposed to be there, mm. but they, apparently they got pulled. Uh, AEW pulled them from the show. So, mm. you know, a lot of these guys are exclusive with AEW. I think not AEW, but I think AEW works, collaborates with other certain companies like certain AAA. Companies. And like, oh, we'll yeah. share talent. Like, I, I know AAA. And AEW shared talent, but yeah. maybe it's just them too. Yeah, so and that's may- it. Oh, like the little mom and pop uh, organizations they get pulled from, huh? Maybe, but for sure, I know they share. They have an agreement with AAA. Yeah. Well, at this show that I'm on, Cactus League Wrestling in San Antonio, I know Enzo and uh, Big Cash are going to be there, so that'll be fun to see. Oh there. yeah, I saw. I saw that Enzo's been doing more wrestling stuff. Yeah, like yeah. I see a lot of posters with Enzo's face in it. Yeah, he's doing shows, House of Glory in New York. Is he wrestling? Or just like uh, I'm not appearance. sure. I'm not sure. Honestly, I'm not sure. Mm. But you know, uh, a couple of months ago, a couple of weeks ago, Master P had the rapper had uh, uh, threw out feeders that man. I'm a run Vincent man out of business with House of Glory. So I had my management team reach out to um, you know House of Glory, Masterpiece people, and right now they're uh, they're kind of full right now. I'm like, what kind of shit is that? I mean, that's bullshit. Mm. I mean, see, there's nobody that looks like me. There's nobody that yeah, works like me. Man. No one that's... I'm a superhero. Not all superheroes need costumes. Yeah, man. It's bullshit. You yeah. know, I, I got to start, you know, calling people out on social media. Yeah. I need to start posting videos and keeping them in my... Uh, not in the Instagram story, but posting them. Yeah, you got you to gotta loosen up your tie a little bit and yeah. cause a little ruckus. Yeah, and roll up my sleeve. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, man. Unbelievable. That's but, nuts. Yeah, I, I got to keep it moving, man. Yeah. In, in 2020, you know, I'm not going to make any promises. And I say all the time, just because moves aren't being announced doesn't mean moves aren't being made. I'm constantly, constantly grinding away and the grind don't stop. Absolutely, man. Mm-mm. And on that note, I think that's a good spot to end it because the sun is going down and you have to, you have a photo shoot that, yeah, yeah. you know, where you need the sun. Yeah. So, yeah, I gotta, um, yeah that, 
that sun sets about five five p.m. now instead of eight p.m. I love the daylight saving though, because you know Do I. Do you like when it gets dark early? Because that I don't mind so much. I love waking up fresh at six o'clock. Because I usually wake up around seven or eight, yeah. and I'm still on that time. So you know, since we gain an hour, like yeah. like I'm up earlier, and oh, so I, you're I up like early, that. And then the sun's out, you know. Yeah, it's out. fine. So I get the normal amount of sun, but it's kind of cool too because when the suns go down, depending on people's schedule, like for me, like the sun goes down at six, I'm like, okay, I'm done for the day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah done, done. <laughs> but um, thank you guys so much for watching and listening. This has been a jam packed episode. episode. Thirty. A lot happened, man. A lot happened in wrestling, and like you know, we just tried our best to cover everything. And I'm sure we missed a lot, but the world of professional wrestling is so big right now, which is a great thing. But we always do our best. Um, Make sure you guys tune in for next week, and maybe we'll have a guest, maybe not, we'll see, but until then, we love you guys. We love you, block the hate, salute the mother freaking great.